Welcome to Unit 17 Visual and Special Effects. In this video, we'll be looking at mats. Set design is critical to successful theatre. When you go to see a stage play, you often see backdrops and flats used as scenery for the actors to act in front of or behind. Set design is also important in film and television, and it is a major component of mise-en-scene. So if you imagine filming on a film set that's got a backdrop up, and you've placed flats like this uh, in front of the camera, but between the camera and the actors, you're going to see those flats as part of the scene. The use of flats in cinematography was transformed by using a sheet of glass and painting on it in a non-reflective or matte paint. These shots were initially referred to as glass shots for obvious reasons. They were also called mats, and this is the term that has become standard in digital filming techniques subsequently. The two shots you can see here are from the film Planet of the Apes starring Charles and Heston. In the top shot, you can see what the director, the actors and the cast see. And in the bottom shot, you see what the camera sees because it is shooting through a piece of glass on which is painted the Statue of Liberty. Take this scene from Star Wars, for instance. I wonder if you can spot which part of this is a mat. I imagine that's quite surprising. A large area of this was painted by hand by artists. In the Hitchcock film, North by Northwest, Cary Grant is chased by a crop duster. The cost and the logistical problems of having a plane in view as Cary Grant was running was almost insurmountable. And so a back screen was used in a studio. You may have noticed in this still that there is motion blur on Cary Grant's hands. This is because it was shot at 24 frames a second. In the wonderful film Stan and Ollie, starring Steve Coogan and John C. Riley, there is a scene that's shot against a back projection. On the left of the screen, you can see the real Laurel and Hardy performing the scene as it would appear in the cinema. On the right, you can see Steve Coogan and John C. Riley acting the parts of Stan and Ollie in the studio. Back projection means that on the screen behind Stan and Ollie, and behind that screen, there is a projector shooting onto the screen the image that can be seen through the other side of the screen where we're standing alongside the camera. It allows you to appreciate how this shot is accomplished. Hopefully, this scene also allows you to appreciate the consummate skill of both Steve Coogan and John C. Riley in the way they have interpreted and depicted the original Oliver and Hardy. A very tough act to follow and something that both actors thought very carefully about and almost didn't do. If you get a chance, I would highly recommend you watching this film. It's a heartwarming tale. It's also very well shot and it stars two of the very finest comedic actors. Parallax. Parallax is an extension of the mat technique that is used to give the illusion of greater movement and motion in a shot. Parallax is used extensively in documentaries, particularly those with old photographs, and has been pioneered uh, by people like Ken Burns. The Ken Burns effect is something you are all familiar with. Finally, in these last scenes, I'm going to do a practical demonstration of cutting out a mat, using a background, and filming against a green screen in order to create a mat effect. The reason I had to use a green screen is because the original picture was too small, and I had to enlarge it on a green screen in the background. Normally, I would just paint it as a backdrop. Because I was filming at home, I didn't have the appropriate studio lighting, and so my green screen effects are not particularly good. I'm also not using a glass shot. I'm not painting on glass, I'm just using a cutout. 
And finally, I am breaking the cardinal rule of never working with children and animals. It is perhaps worth noting that this final shot achieves the goal of two visual and one special effect in the process. I use mats, I use a green screen, I use a prop or costume, and I use variable opacity in the teleportation effect.